Hello, KCI. I'm really excited to have Ryan O'Donnell here to kick off our coursework around game-based learning. Ryan um, is always moving, and at this current moment in time, he's in the car, so we are going to be going live to the road to speak to Ryan O'Donnell. Ryan, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us more about how you and games connect. Hey, everybody. Yeah, Ryan O'Donnell. Uh, uh, I've done a fair amount of different jobs. So, former social studies teacher, currently video production, broadcast journalism, and uh, on the Twitter, creative ed tech. Also, love working with KCI. So, congrats to all you guys for being part. Do some wonderful things out there. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, games are, uh, are have been an integral part, and I think really kind of helped define me as a teacher, even going back to when I first started student teaching in 1990, I forget, which was a while ago. But yeah, uh, yeah. so I got started with l literally watching my lead teacher. I had to sit for and, and watch him for like three or four weeks, and he started playing Jeopardy. And I think so many teachers, uh, we watched that Jeopardy. We, we, we've seen it. We see tons of different versions out there. And back in the 90s, Jeopardy was still being played, but it was he had index cards taped to the chalkboard. And he had the kids eating out of the palm of his hand. He was a wonderful teacher. And I was here at 24 years old thinking I had the answers of sitting in the back on these new computers they gave us with Windows 3.1 and we had a, micro, a PowerPoint. And I thought, I, could, I can make his little index card game look better. And uh, so I made it look, you know, make it look like the Jeopardy thing. And I uh, tried to show it to him but later on, you know, weeks later, once I got the game all done. And in a nice way, he was, he was asking if it could do some of the things that he was doing live in the classroom. And it couldn't because PowerPoint struggled a lot back yeah. then. It wasn't interactive. You couldn't jump. There was no choice involved. Right. The way I had it, you had to go vocabulary one, vocabulary two, vocabulary three. And he goes, so my game is, you could do more with mine. And I thought, no, no, no. You could do more with mine, but... But I couldn't. It just I thought it looked better. And I think that was a struggle for me in terms of constantly trying to want to prove Jack wrong for the next 10, 12 years of my <laughs> teaching of trying to build a better mousetrap and try to be able to make a, a better game that looked better. And I didn't realize, like all of us do, it takes time in your life to be able to realize and try and not be so young, I guess, and, and realize that um, Jack did a great job because of he focused more on lesson design than on mm. – um, than on the, uh, on the fancy, uh, cool graphics. And I think I will say that I hit my rock bottom playing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Because uh, I thought that game was so exciting. I had students help me develop it. But my rock bottom was I had one kid sitting in the middle of the room and 34 of them yeah. watching. And I thought I was creating an experience. Be but because I thought it was about me, it was the game, it was the bells and whistles. But there was not a lot of student engagement in there. And it took me a long time in this path to realize is that no matter any game that you're doing, uh, uh, so for me it's primarily these review games. Uh, but you you gotta you gotta focus on student engagement. You gotta get people involved. Okay, so so tell us more about that. I love hearing, I love hearing the kind of fail forward moment you had there, where it's like actually maybe I am doing this wrong, which is like a total yeah. humble place to be. So you've evolved since then. So tell us now how you've evolved and, and how you use games now to engage students. So the biggest thing I, 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 I said is like, okay, I got to get them engaged more. So one, write better questions. Mm. So don't have a noun be the answer. I, can it. I be able to have more in-depth um, demonstration of their knowledge? Because of, uh, the way that I'm doing that, their assessments basically that I can use as conversation starters to see how well kids are doing. Mm -hmm. And so first off, change the questions a little bit. But then it was, okay, well, what if we do the idea of don't have them answer the question, have them demonstrate it a different way. There you so go. The, again, going back to a game, the game that changed my life was $100,000 Pyramid, Dick Clark's $100,000 Pyramid. And hand in hand, around the same time, I remember being down in Disneyland with friends and family when the heads up game on the uh, phones came oh, out. Oh, yes. Oh, thought, my gosh. What's happening is if I could recreate that experience in the classroom and I just put up prompts, I put up things that I want them to know about and discuss and have one kid see that word and the other one not able to see it. And one of them's got to be able to get the other one to say it. And that game has transformed so much. 
it's the simplest thing in, in, in which to do. I've rebranded it and changed it a bit, and I kind of created my own version of it. I call it Frazzle. I was going to say, and is that the one? Cool. Did we play that at Hoot Nanny yeah. two years ago? Oh, yeah. 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 That's fine. Basically, you, put, you just put something up there. You put up a name, George Washington, or you put up photosynthesis, or you put up whatever, and, and one person now needs to have to demonstrate that. Yeah. And it's kind of fun to be able to watch um, kids who fail. Sometimes they're mm -hmm. going to try to be able to. There's a timer associated with it. Um, and uh, But have the kids realize that uh, they're up there on stage trying to demonstrate it. And the way in which I designed this game is that I just let them go for a while. And that's my big walk away from it all is that it's not about me. Right. I sit back and I let them do it all. We, we, we have a series of different rounds. And after a round, then I interject. And after watching a couple different uh, uh, teams play, I generally break up like a class into a class of normal size and like three groups and I'll have all the groups play the same questions so I can see over and over and over again the rest of the kids who are not playing get to see it and also more kids get to participate so I can have lots more as opposed to that who wants to be a millionaire syndrome be able to do that and now I could be able to come in afterwards and now do any reteaching or mm -hmm. congratulating that they've demonstrated that they know certain things better than another and that was my sort of epiphany of realizing that it's not about you. Mm -hmm. if, when there's games, you need to put students uh, active and participating in the games. And, um, and that led to a bunch of other sort of games opening up that I say, hey, I want to be able to develop more choice, which is, I think, a big important thing. Mm -hmm. So even going back to that old school Jeopardy idea, the you're going to get to all the questions on the board, but if you have that interact interactivity that a kid can go for, people in places for 400 as opposed to vocabulary for 100 right they have choice there and trust me that does that does help yeah um so frazzle that's the one you were just talking about right frazzle yeah frazzle was the one i was just okay. talking about yeah so just to let the kci people know i'm going to give you guys a link to that because ryan actually has that template for free um to download so i'll make sure you guys have access yeah, to play it. with that as well as some of his other templates mm -hmm. that he has um, online. Um, okay, so we have one last big nugget, Ryan. What is one tip you would give an educator who is thinking about going down this path of game-based learning and starting to integrate them more? Okay, so it's kind of a it's kind of a hard. It's not necessary to put a finger on one thing, but it, I would say generally look at your role and realize that your role in these moments. So regardless of whatever kind of game, if it's going to be a, a different uh, board or game, oh, we're games on or games, what is to keep what not a teacher anymore? You're a game show host. Whatever that game situation is, you need to be able to also think about yourself and what are you what are you doing in here to facilitate? And that word we talk about mm. a lot, but really, I think in a game. A game facilitator is really important because you got to do everything from you got to nudge. Not everyone's crazy about games, so you got to right. gently nudge some people who are a little apprehensive. You got to be able to read a kid who is not willing to participate and they don't want to do anything and be relatively okay with that. So you got to be a, a, a life coach. You got to be a counselor. You got to be a game show host, <laughs> and you got to be flexible in this and realizing that it is um, um, you need to try to accommodate and try to uh, make it kind of fun and interesting and exciting, but also realize everybody in the room, because we're all at different places. When yeah. we think about people are different different places academically. I got above, uh, above grade learners, below and on grade learners, but I also got different people who are social, emotional stuff. Mm -hmm. If you t play that game Frazzle, and I pop a kid, and I'm like, come on, kid, get up there and start giving clues. Right. Some kids are gonna absolutely lose their mind, mm -hmm. and I need to be able to realize that from knowing the kids originally, also reading their how they are then, um, and just be aware and conscious of that. And also try to, the last one in terms of, try to build up some excitement for it. Yeah. And um, don't make it don't make it a force. Because all games are required, uh, one of the biggest things is, is fun. And so yeah. um, you can't force fun, but you've got to be able to sell fun. I love it. I think you bring up some really good points that I'm excited to explore with the class. The stuff about kind of the social emotional awareness of your players and what your purpose is and what the bigger picture of it all is and how you as an instructor are going to really embody it on all these different levels. That's stuff I hadn't even thought about. So thank you for saying that and thank you for the time today. Um, glad you're driving no safely and um, 
I thank you. Okay, you're safe. Good. All right. Well, thank you, Ryan, and to everybody else, let's have some fun. Let's kick this party off. Have a good one, guys.